Hello, and welcome to Shaking and Sipping. This is the show where we shake up or otherwise combine a cocktail or other mixed drink, have a sip, and talk a bit about its history, some variants, and how it is. We're continuing our quest to work through the IBA's official list of cocktails to see how those stack up. We're in the second section, the Contemporary Classics, and this week's Contemporary Classic is the Cuba Libre. Now, the Cuba Libre is a very simple drink, and it's often a bit maligned, I think, for that reason. It is essentially a rum and coke, or as I always think of whenever I say that, a rum and Coca-Cola, because I love the way that that William Shatner delivers that line on his cover of uh, Common People. So good. I'll have a rum and Coca-Cola. Thanks, Bill. Um, But... It is an interesting drink, I think, for a couple of reasons. I don't think it necessarily deserves its malign reputation. So historically, we don't have exact details, but we have some idea of from when and where it came from. So it certainly originated in Cuba. Um, Whether it originated in the very late 19th century or very early 20th century is disputed. And there's a few different reasons for this. So in that time period, if you remember your history, That is when, uh, well, at the beginning of that window is when uh, Cuba's under Spanish control. And of course, um, then they don't want to be under Spanish control anymore. So people would say Cuba Libre, literally free Cuba, right? Meaning that they don't want to be under Spanish control anymore. And then there were a lot of Americans there because there was the whole Spanish-American war that happened, which is where we sailed the ship over to Cuba and then it exploded and we're like, the Spanish did it. It's like, did they really do it? And we're like, I don't know, but we're well, going to say they did. And they're like, and by the way, we're going to take the Philippines. So that was a whole series of things that occurred. Um, but this drink was apparently ordered in bars in Cuba around that time, either just before Cuban independence, in which case they set it sort of as like a, as, as a rallying cry, or it was just after Cuban independence. In, independence in one story it's uh, it's it, it, it said that it was on the first anniversary or so of Cuban independence and someone made a toast and said here's to free Cuba and everyone said yay and then that drink got its name there regardless of who exactly and where exactly that seems to be the story the reason why these dates and things are a bit conflicted is there's an odd amount of controversy over when coca-cola became available in cuba some people say there's no way it was there before 1900 some people say 1904 there's a story of someone who was bottling it back in like 1890 but apparently it tasted terrible so then they took it off the market until they started shipping over the concentrate i don't know it was a around that time period, it became popular, became popular with Bacardi, which was then, um, you know, a, a Cuban rum. Um, and it was just Coca-Cola, rum, and probably lime juice. And that's what it is till this day. Now, I think it's interesting for two reasons. One is this is probably the first common drink that was a blank and Coke. So Coke, of course, now is very commonly used with whiskey. Some people mix it with vodka, other things. But that stuff really didn't become popular until Prohibition when the average quality of available spirits was very low, and so folks were looking for a mixer that was quite robust itself to stand up to spirits that may have some off flavors. And so that's where Coke became very common as a mixer outside of rum, which it already had this history with going back you know, 30 years previous um, in or around Cuba. So I think it's interesting for that reason. The other thing I think is makes it interesting is people sort of scoff at using coke in general like oh it's a you know cola whatever blah 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 that's not like a thing you'd mix with with rum of course what you mix with rum is fruits right well that's the main ingredient or not not ingredient but those are the main flavors in coca-cola it's a complicated enough drink that it's hard to pick out what the flavors are but the key flavors are orange neruli oil which is bitter orange um and lime oil right it's it's not the juices it's the oils there's other things too there's cinnamon there's probably a little bit of vanilla there's arguably nutmeg um there's obviously coca leaf extract without the fun element of it um and there's caffeine added which adds which adds bitterness to it but the key flavor components are citruses and specifically they're orange and lime probably lemon as well um those are things that make sense to mix with rum so i think it's worth trying and keeping an open mind to 
Now, we're not gonna look at a whole lot of different variations today. I think this is a simple drink and it should really kind of be kept as a simple drink. There are some very early versions that included a second spirit. There are also some both early and later versions that added bitters. Uh, both of these are interesting ideas. I'm not opposed to them, but we're not gonna do them today. We're gonna start with the IBA spec, which I think is a very simple, obvious prep preparation. Other than that, its instructions are bad. So we're gonna go ahead and mix this up. We're gonna start with some lime juice. And the IBA's instructions give you our three ingredients and then say to build them in a highball glass filled with ice. Now the problem is build doesn't really mean anything specifically. To build a drink just means that we are going to be sort of making it in the glass that you're you know, serving it in. It doesn't imply any specific order, it doesn't imply stirring, it doesn't imply any of that sort of thing. So if you were making this drink to normal principles, you would obviously build it in order from cheapest to most expensive ingredient. That's how you generally build a drink so that if you screw up on the drink, you can restart before you've added your expensive thing. If you were to do that in this glass without stirring, um, you would end up with rum on top, coke on the bottom. Rum is less dense than coke, so that's just going to sit on top and do nothing. If you instead build it with coke last, and especially if you're in a real bar and you have a soda gun, then you don't need to mix it any further because that's gonna mix fine as is. But if you don't build it in the right order and you don't mix it, you're gonna end up with the weirdest drink. Anyway, that was 10 milliliters of our lime juice. We then want 50 milliliters, or one and two-third ounces, of a very simple light rum. I'm using Bacardi Superior. Obviously, the you know quote-unquote traditional choice is Havana Club. Unfortunately, the Havana Club you can get in the U.S. is a Bacardi product that uh, isn't Havana Club. Um, the real Havana Club is a joint venture between the Cuban government and Pernod Ricard, and of course is not available in the U.S. because there's still all the embargo and import stuff uh, between the U.S. and Cuba. And then finally we need our Coca-Cola. This recipe calls for four ounces, which I'm hopeful is going to just fit into the glass here. It's going to be 120 milliliters. Yeah, that's going to work out perfectly. I could actually fit a little more in if you And then we want to garnish with a nice lime wedge. And so that is it. No stirring necessary, no other preparation necessary. That is an IBA spec Cuba Libre. So nose I'm getting lime, but there's a little bit of stuff happening in there from the coke that's actually getting me on the nose before the lime even though it's right there. Yeah. And it's good. It's simple. This is not the most complex drink that you're ever going to have. I think that going ahead and squeezing in a little more of our lime and giving that a little stir just to be sure everything's acquainted is not a bad idea. Yeah, I actually get a little more lime on the nose now. Yeah, it's very simple. It tastes largely of Coca-Cola, um, but having the lime in there is kind of accenting some of that orange flavor in the Coke. It's coming out a little bit more now. It's simple, it's bright. I get that hit of the lime tartness, then that goes into a little bit of some of those fruit oils of the Coke, and then it's dry and the aftertaste um, kind of returns to that coke aftertaste, that little bit of bitterness, a little bit of sort of burnt sugar with the phosphoric acid, a little bit of, um, you know, characteristic uh, sourness, I, I suppose. No discernible alcohol really in this whatsoever, um, Bacardi being very mild and the amount not being huge, but I, I think that's a perfectly palatable drink. I have nothing against it. All right, for our second version, we're gonna do almost exactly the same thing, just make it a little bit closer to how it was likely made 100 plus years ago. We're gonna put in two quarters of a lime here, 
And then I'm going to just take the muddle here. And I'm both juicing them and releasing some of that lime oil here. Not needing to push that hard, but just pushing relatively hard and then twisting a bit to get abrasion with the surface of the limes. You can see there's some random lime pulp scattered about there, which is what we want here. And then I'm going to add my ice atop that. And then we'll again use, I think I'm going to actually slightly up, no, we'll use the same. We'll use the 50 milliliters of our Bacardi. And then this time, we are going to go with some of the Coke made with real sugar. Um, I am not a person who really cares about the sugar distinction for any sort of health reasons or anything like that, but it does definitely taste a little bit differently. I am going to give that just a very light twist just to make sure if there's any lime juice or anything trapped below those limes that we're sort of releasing that, doing the barest minimum of integration here to be sure we're all well mixed. So the nose is a little more muted on this one. So that reads a lot sweeter, actually, because I'm reading the sugar more as cane sugar. I'm kind of actually in my mind, like picturing dumping a spoonful of sugar into this, and I'm really reading that. Yeah, I'm getting some lime, not a ton more than in the other. Um, there is maybe a little bit more richness to the lime, but whether that's because I've expressed some oils in muddling, or that's an interaction with the sugar in the um, uh, real sugar Coke, I'm not entirely sure. This is very good. I don't know if it's any better, to be honest. You know, this is a lot more expensive. Um, comes in, you know, much smaller, less convenient packages, um, harder to find. Is it better? I don't know. Honestly, it's different, but it's not, I don't think it's better. I think this one reads more like a sort of, this tastes more like I built it from the ground up rather than just mixed a pre-made soft drink with rum. But I don't know if I actually like that anymore, if that makes sense. All right, and for our final version, we're gonna be very simple here. We're gonna stop measuring things, and we're gonna switch up our rum. So I'm using just a double old-fashioned glass here, and I'm gonna put about half of a lime's juice in. To that, I'm going to add some rum. About that much rum. And this is uh, El Dorado Three Year. This is a rum from Guyana. Uh, it's a Demerara rum. Um, and so this is a weird product because this is aged in barrels um, for a full three years at least. So you would expect this to have more color to it. Um, it is filtered after it is aged, so it comes back to being clear, but it has a much more developed aged flavor, but not an especially funky one. I like funky rums in uh, Cuba Libre, but I like this one as well. It has a developed, slightly woody, slightly sweet, molassesy flavors to it, but not incredibly, um, you know, unripe fruit. Uh, banana peel, not a ton of that character. And then we're just going to top that up with some Coca-Cola. About that amount. Yeah, about that amount. And then we're going to just squeeze some lime in there, toss that in, give it just a quick turn. And this is how I would make a Cuba Libre. Just throw it together without measuring and pick a rum that has a little bit more character than a Bacardi or one of the 
one year Havana clubs if you're somewhere where those are available. The nicer, longer aged Havana clubs are perfectly nice and interesting rums, but the basic one year is very similar to something like a Bacardi. Um, so, I don't know. It's fine, but use something with a little bit of flavor, maybe. Yeah, and so that's a lot better. So, this has a lot of lime, because um, I used a whole half slime juice in there to a relatively small drink. A lot of lime right at the front, and then sort of widening. And now, instead of getting just sort of Coke the whole way through, um, the very front of the tongue feels like I'm taking a sip of a Coke coca-cola i get that phosphoric acid sweet thing but then immediately i get some of this slightly funky weird sugars out of the rum and then i start to get a little bit of that coke flavor some of that orange and the neruli and whatnot um, as it goes certainly not the most um the most complex difficult to describe um you know, flavor sensation we've ever had on the show, but this is just a lovely drink. I don't believe it deserves the, uh, the scorn it sometimes receives. Well, that's all we have for this week. It was a pretty quick and simple episode, but there's only so much we need to really get into when we're making a rum and coke. I'll have a rum and coca-cola. Sorry, Bill. I hope that you will give a try to one of these if you happen to have some rum and coke around the house or other sort of cola-like beverage. Um, works fine, too. Visit the blog at shakingandsipping.com where we'll have a write-up on this and each other drink we cover, as well as most weeks the day of following the episode. We'll have IBA in Real Life where we talk about going to a local Seattle cocktail bar and ordering the drink, seeing if they make it often, if they have tweaks on it, etc. I'm not sure yet if we're going to do that this week. A good way to find out would either be to check back on the blog on Friday or follow on Twitter at shaking underscore sipping, where I always shout out when we're doing an IBA in Real Life or other similar event. Please do all the YouTube stuff like, share, subscribe, tell your friends, comment, whatever. Um, I would really appreciate that. And I will be back next week with the next drink on the IBA's list. Probably one with a few more variants or a little more complexity in our discussion than this one. But in any case, have a great week. Until next week, happy sipping. Cheers. <laughs>